Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be learning about the chemical properties of alcohol through a practice problem. Before I get right into the video, if you enjoy educational content like this, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification button so that YouTube will notify you when I've posted up a video. You can follow me on my Instagram as well as TikTok if you're interested in daily short lessons. So let's get right into the video. Let's say we had a chemical compound A and this organic compound with three carbon undergoes reactions as shown in the diagram. I'll get to the diagram in a bit. Identify all compounds and reactions. So let's look at the diagram. Let's say A undergoes the first reaction to become B and this is called reaction 1. And In this reaction, acidified potassium manganate 7 or acidified potassium permanganate solution is used. And let's say there is another reaction, reaction number 2. And in this reaction, porcelain chips is used. After compound C is formed, compound C is reacted in reaction 3. And in this reaction, there's hydrogen, gas, and nickel used. We are required to identify all these compounds based on all the information that we have here alone. Now let's study the five basic types of organic compounds. So we have the alkane, alkene, alcohol, carboxylic acid, as well as ester. So these are the five basic organic compounds. Now let's see what works with A, since A is the starting point. A has reacted with acidified potassium magnet 7 solution as well as in the presence of porcelain chips. So if we look at alkanes, alkanes are fairly unreactive because they are saturated organic compounds. They do not normally undergo a reaction with acidified potassium magnet solution. Neither do they undergo a reaction involving porcelain chips. So alkane is out of the picture. Then let's look at alkene. Alkenes are very reactive because they have a carbon-carbon double bond and they are unsaturated. And so they can react with acidified potassium permanganate solution to form diols, but they do not react with porcelain chips. So we can eliminate alkene as well. Carboxylic acid is not going to undergo uh, reaction with acidified potassium manganate solution under normal conditions. And there is no reaction with porcelain chips, so carboxylic acid is out of the way. And esters. Esters are not going to undergo these two reactions as well so it can't be ester so the only explanation here is alcohol alcohol can undergo both reactions let's see what it becomes first the question has already stated that this compound has three carbons and therefore it has to be propanol prop is a prefix for three carbons if you haven't seen my videos on hydrocarbons and uh, isomers naming of isomers i've included the links in the description below please go and watch that as well so from propanol, what happens in reaction 1 when it is reacted with potassium manganate 7 solution? First, let's look at the structure of propanol. It's easier to understand from there. So propanol has 3 carbons, so 1, 2, 3 carbons. Since it is an alcohol, the functional group of alcohols is the hydroxyl group, the OH group. So let's add the OH group. And the rest are just hydrogen atoms. So let's just fill up the hydrogen atoms. Each carbon should have 4 bonds. So just fill them up accordingly. So this is propanol. Now, from propanol, when it is reacted with acidified potassium manganate 7 solution, this is an oxidizing agent. So the alcohol is oxidized. And what is it oxidized into? It's very simple. The carbon that is bonded to the hydroxyl group, let's look at this one. We just remove both hydrogens and add a double bond with an oxygen. So we get C double O O H. Now, this is a carboxyl group. And a carboxyl group would mean that this compound is a carboxylic acid. Now, carboxylic acid with three carbons is known as propanoic acid. And this reaction is an oxidation reaction. Now, let's look at reaction number two. So, what happens when we have porcelain chips? So, let's go back to alcohol. Now, in this case, it's easier to place the hydroxyl group here. Whether it is here or here, it does not matter. It is exactly the same thing because we have to understand how it works in three-dimensional structure. So the hydroxyl group is now here. This is still propanol. So what happens when we put it with porcelain chips? This actually requires heating. And what is going to happen here is dehydration. Now, dehydration is the opposite of hydration. Hydration is the addition of water. Dehydration is the removal of it. So when we look at the hydroxyl group here and the hydrogen right next to it, both will be removed and in place of it, a double bond will form, a carbon-carbon double bond. Now, this is a three-carbon compound 
with a carbon carbon double bond as the functional group now carbon carbon double bonds are the functional group of alkenes and therefore this is propene and the reaction is dehydration now what happens when we take propene and we react it with hydrogen gas alkenes are highly reactive propene is an alkene because of the carbon carbon double bond since it has a carbon carbon double bond it is known as an unsaturated compound and it can react with many other substances because other substances can fill in the place here there is an empty place here because of the carbon carbon double bonds when propene is reacted with hydrogen gas what is going to happen is this carbon carbon double bond is going to break and the hydrogen will now bond with the carbon atoms so this is what it will look like there will be two hydrogen atoms here bonded to both the carbons where there was initially the carbon carbon double bond now this is known as an addition reaction specifically when hydrogen is added this is known as hydrogenation and a three carbon compound where there are no carbon carbon double bonds they are all carbon carbon single bonds and in the absence of any other functional group this is known as propane this is an alkane and there are many conditions for hydrogenation such as the presence of nickel as a catalyst that's why nickel is here nickel or platinum and a temperature of around 150 to 180 degrees Celsius as well as pressure of 200 atmospheres there is another chemical property of alcohol in that is they are very good to be used as fuels because they can be combusted alcohols undergo clean combustion in the presence of excess oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water only just like alkanes and alkenes so these are the chemical properties of alcohol I hope you've learned something. If you have, please don't forget to hit that like button because it really does help me. It helps tell YouTube that this is a good video and YouTube will promote this video to others as well. So thank you for watching and if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. I'll be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.